Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl back with another one and this will be the first smartphone that we're checking out in 2021. It's the brand new S21 from Samsung. It's their new flagship. They typically release it in February, I think, but this year they kind of lined it up with CES. We had the virtual launch. Pretty much everyone knows the specs of this. The rumor mills and all of the leaks have kind of confirmed everything that we're seeing from Samsung. So they released three different models, the S21, S21 Plus, and of course the S21 Ultra. All of those videos are coming. We've of course just got the standard one here. They've reduced the price this year around, which I think is the right direction. So it's 799 bucks US or 1129 Canadian. We get absolutely shafted by our dollar. We'll get into what the phone is actually about, but let's get to the unboxing and see what it's all about. So you can see the box design, fairly simple. It's actually a lot thinner, reminds me a lot of the iPhone boxes. That's because we no longer have a charger inside. It's a common theme that I think we'll be seeing across most phones these days. You either already have one or you'll have to pay for an extra one. The S on the logo, it is purple. And I think that corresponds to the colorway of the phone. So that's a bit of a tease. You can see of course the 21 and of course, it is now a 5G device, just like it was on the S20 from last year. Sliding the box up, you can see the device up top. And to kind of confirm that, we do have the purple one. So this is a bit of a two-tone finish. I think this one shows off the camera bump the best. You can see, of course, the purple, the gold, and the best part of any video. That asthma unboxing. You can see just the standard user manuals and that is a very sad sight to see. So nothing else underneath the box. Inside of here, you've just got your SIM card slot tool and a USB-C charging cable and a quick start guide. That is the most minimal unboxing, no stickers, nothing else. That is all you get in the box. Kind of takes away from the unboxing experience, I think. And the first thing that you'll notice when you pick up the S21, it is a matte finish, just like they all are across the board. But unfortunately, we can hear that. The back is made out of plastic, polycarbonate. It's one of the steps that they took to reduce the price. So you'll either love or hate that. I know that most people usually rock a skin or a case on that. So it's not the biggest compromise, I think. I'm definitely happy to save 200 bucks if that was the only compromise, but there are a few others. And coming to the overall design, it's different from anything that we've kind of seen. And the only word that I can kind of use to describe it, it looks like a superhero. It looks like Thanos actually from the Avengers. If this was red and yellow, it would be like Iron Man. And you can see the clear difference when I bring over my Note 20, there's that clear design difference. And I think most people will like that. I think it's a justified change. It's slight, it isn't really anything too crazy though. And you'll also still see the triple camera system on the back. So that has been modified this year. We've got updated sensors. So it's got a 12 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 64 megapixel telephoto. You can still get all the way up to the 100 times space zoom, but you can kind of see that they've removed that moniker on the back. And apparently the stability for that is improved. So we will get to that testing on the front. So this is where of course the S21 is smaller than the ultra. It's got a 6.2 inch display as I take that off and we'll power on the device. And as this boots up, we'll quickly talk about the specs that come inside. So the silicone, it's the new Snapdragon 888 chip. It's got eight gigs of RAM and now you only have storage options of either 128 or 256. So this is another one of their downgrades, I would say. They've reduced or kind of removed the ability to upgrade internal storage. So you can no longer stick a micro SD card in. And I honestly think that's one of the big selling points for a lot of Android phones. So not having that is a bit of a letdown and of course, no headphone jack. So a lot of the features are of course going away. They're really slimming it down. One area that they've improved though is the fingerprint sensor, the new one from Qualcomm. It's 27% larger, so that should help with unlocking your phone, makes it a bit quicker and a bit easier. And now you can see that it's unlocked. And this is actually the first time for a screen for a flagship Samsung device. It is no longer quad HD. They've reduced the quality to strictly 1080. If you wanna bump up, you'll have to get the ultra. 
On the flip side though, the refresh rate is adaptive, so it'll switch between 48 to 120, depending on what you do. Most people that have used a Samsung device anyways, I'll take my Note 20 Ultra again as an example, have had to make that sacrifice. If you want that 120 hertz refresh rate, you usually have to step down to 1080p anyways. So having that adaptive screen, having 1080p, I don't think that's the biggest issue, and especially on the smaller device, the S21 with a 6.2 inch display, I don't think that makes too big of a difference. But despite all of those sacrifices that this phone makes to keep that price low, the overall experience is still great. So it does come with Android 11 out of the box, One UI 3.1. It's quick, it's snappy, it's Samsung's flagship. Obviously it should be. Is it worth the price though? For $799, I still think with all of those sacrifices that it makes, it still could have come down to maybe that sweet spot, $699 maybe? And of course, I'll be testing this out in more in depth against say the latest iPhone, of course, say the latest Pixel. If you wanna see any specific testing, let me know down below in the comments. But I wouldn't say this is technically an upgrade. The only thing that you're upgrading here is the price because it's cheaper. A lot of the actual hardware specs, other than of course the latest silicone chip, have actually kind of gone down. And one thing that I still can't get over is the clickiness of the plastic back. I'm definitely someone that loves to rock my phones naked. I love the feel of a premium phone in my hand. I don't get the same feeling with this. You'll have to look towards the S21 Ultra, but that of course is coming up in my next vid. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this very quick unboxing and first look at Samsung's new flagship. Always curious to hear your guys' thoughts and I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Hopefully the Ultra version. Peace.